Now we're going to look at two systems, a shower system and a laundry system for this house. Right here is a shower system. Shower's right here. It's actually a little bit farther in, but we go underneath the house, come out this great system, 308 out again. And right here is a small filter system. It definitely needs to be cleaned out. Um, I'll come back later and remove that and put a new system in. But you can see how the filter goes through there. It percolates down in and back out to the yard. So the three valve, why we have this is so that, that way we can redirect the water back to the sewer. Right now, in this position, it's closed off. But if we turn this in this direction like this, now all the water will go to the sewer and this is closed off to the gray water irrigation system out to the yard. You do that because if for some reason you're cleaning the bathtub with harmful chemicals or let's say you're washing your baby that just pooped all over themselves. You don't want that poopy water going out to your gray water landscape because it has a lot of pathogens. That's when you switch out your valve system. We're gonna put it back so that it's all going to the landscape right now. And when you divert it, we divert it to the overfill that's typically in most yards. Somewhere in your yard, or the right side or the left side of the house, you'll find this overfill. And the plumbers use this to clean out the the pipe whenever roots get into it or something like that. But it's easy connection. Okay, now let's go around the house and we're going to see one more filter on this house. It's the laundry and we use a separate one to cover the other side of the house. Okay, so here is the laundry system. It was sitting over here underneath the laundry room, but this particular owner wanted to put his um, barbecue here, so we extend the pipe over to this section. Goes through the filter, same type of system, gets the filter material. This one shouldn't be as um, filled up. It's a little tougher to get into because it was a tight fit when we first put it in. So this is a smaller system, just like the other one on the side of the house. Water goes through here, comes out this PVC pipe, and then goes out the other side of the house. So we'll walk over there and see that in the yard. So now we look at this front yard, this yard is actually split up in two sections. Half of it is potable water, subsurface irrigation. We're doing a test because we feel that the same type of aquifer pipe used in potable water will still save 65% of your water consumption for growing grass. On the other side is strictly just gray water. So let's look. At so I use the word potable water and that's the technical term. Most people call it drinkable water. It's basically the water that comes from your city tap, from your faucet, you turn on your faucet. It's that water that, that in technical terms is called potable. Um, I don't know what they get the word potable from, but that's the term that we typically use. Gray water, some people get confused with gray water that it's recycled water. Those are two separate types of waters. Gray water is water just straight from your shower or your laundry untreated going out to your yard. Recycled water is typically sewer water that goes to a central plant in the city, is clean and processed, and then sent back out into the community in purple pipes. And that's where you see on the signs in a lot of parks and around roadways where it says recycled water, do not drink. That's what that is, the difference between the two. This side right here is mostly Bermuda grass. It's very thick and it's all shower water. At one time this yard was strictly a hard pack soil. It was very difficult to get any green going on in this yard. On the other side over here, we still got the marina grass growing. We still have some brown spots, but it's coming up pretty good. And this is all done with potable water. Um, I think the difference is what I'm going to do a soil test is that on the left side that we we're just looking at, it's the skin when your skin comes off and the soaps and everything else are helping the soil spread the water and the skin cells are actually adding nitrogen to the soil. So it makes a healthier environment for the landscape. 
where this is strictly potable water, which has a lot of chlorine and, and chemicals to keep it clean or make it clean for us to have the drinking water. Um, so those are the two main differences. So now we're gonna go to the other side of the yard. <clears throat> this is where the laundry water ends up at. The other side with the shower, this is laundry. So this whole area right here is maintained by the laundry water. This grass, all underneath this area right here, the laundry water comes pouring out these three pipes right here. It's actually one pipe. And by turning the different valves, that allows us to direct it to different locations. When I turn off both of these valves, no water is going to the grass and it's all going to the around the tree and the plant here. When I leave this valve on like it was, it's feeding the bottom half of the grass. And this valve right here feeds the top half of this, this area right here of the grass. What I mean by bottom half and top half, a lot of houses are built on a slope and this yard has a slight slope to it. You don't notice it, but when you're putting the aquifer pipe in at a foot depth and you want to keep it level at zero grade, you start to notice that the grade, any little grade was going to add up. Sometimes you have to terrace the yard in order to get the best effect out of the great water irrigation. Click on the description below to find out where to buy the products. We also have links to instructions to how to build a great water system. Be sure to subscribe to our channel and like this video. We would also love to hear your questions and also share how you prevent climate change. Put those in the comment section as well.